the freak? Yes, these is just totally jacked up. Whoa, I mean, that's kind of absurd. It's just unbelievable. What a freaking mess. So one, the flat top has the lowest overall design with the highest level of safety because where's your danger zones? Top left, top right. Notice we have considerably more clearance and strength top left, top right. Because of the flat design, you're putting the strength and the clearance and the safety right where you need it while still having the lowest overall design so it will fit into the truck that has the topper or like the SUV or your van where you've got that lowest overall design because that little difference makes a big difference. What the freak? Each one of the cage pieces has inches of Kevlar netting fraying and falling off. Yes, he's just totally jacked up. He just, just uh, doesn't have the experience. Why? Because when you have an electric unit and you need electrical pack, well, that electrical pack has to go around the outside of these. With the flat top, it's perfectly matched so the, the electronics pack fits perfectly around the motor mounts. Everything's perfectly clean, slim, takes up the space, and makes a very nice back mounting plan. This, st you're, start showing examples you're of what adding you a whole bunch of material instead of making minimal material exactly where you need it and not where you don't. These like stick out. When you go to forward launch, bam, now you got snag points for lines. Flat top, woo, perfectly smooth. Everything flush and level. Whoa, these welds look like they were done by somebody's cousin who desperately needed a job. And of course they're welding a flat to a round and just filling in the gap and missing holes. I mean, that's kind of absurd. And then of course this is off. It's not even close. That's a mess. I need to see the harness and the gas tank. I mean, it's just another perfect example. You've got a flat into the wind. You have to think about aerodynamic. Imagine holding that gas tank out the window of your car while you're driving 40 miles an hour. Every bit of drag like that steals thrust because it takes more power to push that through the air. Also, if you notice, their tank is completely 100% behind the frame. With the flat top, the tank hangs exactly under the frame. See how the, the gas tank is in front of the frame? It's under the frame, so your weight is even. So you're bringing the weight as far forward under as possible where that puts it all behind you. Then their fill cap is way up to the side behind the engine. I mean, look where your engine's gonna be. Notice that the whole exhaust is going to be like right here. I mean, how are you, you going to fill it with the exhaust right in front of your fuel tank and a metal buckle resting on a plastic tank? It's just unbelievable. What a freaking mess. And you know it's not heat treated, so you're going to have cracking in the frame. Whoa. Look how thin this is. This is what your life is hanging by. This thin little you can rip it velcro this is what is supposed to hold your life on now look at a flat top this strap has 3500 pound webbing sewn to the velcro so you're not hanging from velcro you've got that backed up to a strap loading again they don't have the experience to understand all the things that have happened all the things that have gone wrong and how to fix that Stuff like this is huge. This is just a cheap aluminum rivet. This will shear right off. It's like, oh, hey, look, we got this heavy Kevlar. You don't want fatter Kevlar, but it's not fatter. It looks like he just flat out lied. Because when I designed the flat top, this rivet has a stainless shank. I tried a ton of rivets. My requirement, I actually riveted one piece of Kevlar to a tube, and then I jumped up and down on that rivet with my entire body weight. It had to hold each point had to hold my entire body weight. These cheap crappy aluminum rivets that have the aluminum shank, the rivet will shear off. So it doesn't matter if you've got 5,000 pound strength Kevlar, if it's hanging from an aluminum rivet, the rivet is just going to shear off. The strength simply isn't there. Where the flat top is incredibly strong. I know that's interesting. And one tiny little rivet where the flat top, every connection point has two rivet holding those in. So you've got much, much more strength and more strength laddery. If you've got only one rivet holding the pin in, it's more likely to rip out. But by having two rivets in it, you increase the strength more than double, actually, because it's held from both sides. And look at this. It's just sloppy. It's just weird. It's like, I don't know, the quality's so low, and then the welds are so bad, it's kind of ridiculous. Of course, you got to start off with the weight. That weight is huge huge the difference in weight which we haven't put it all together it's got to be at least five pounds or more others have said seven there's many variables just that difference in weight is so huge 
Just based on that, it negates the whole deal right there. That weight is critical. They think about picking up a unit with an extra four pounds and standing there. And that's how people think. They're like, oh, well, four pounds, that's no big deal. That's not how you look at it. The way you look at it is you run as fast as you physically can right up to the point where you can't physically run any faster with that weight and you're about to trip and fall down. Now add four pounds to your back. It makes a huge difference when it comes to performance and to being able to do things that other people can't do. You can launch smaller gliders at higher altitude in less wind or no wind, you know, up in the mountains in difficult areas. When you have that extra weight, it severely limits you. Every single component on the flat top is made as light, but as strong. So you're not sacrificing strength or safety, but it's absolutely as light with the highest tech materials and designed properly. It'd be interesting to check the thickness of tubing, but the flat top, every tube is made a different thickness, kind of like a bicycle where they have different thickness tubing, depending on where you need the strength and where you don't. Of course, without you know no heat treating it's just man it's just messed Here, come up. look at this come but look i need the comfort bars but oh, look at the uh, look at it from the side real quick oh it's not even flat it's all like twisty and bendy and notice that this velcro opens yeah. this way so your lines can catch it and the flat top velcro always it's goes on, on the, the back you know the flat top velcro is centered this one's completely off to one side i mean the with this to detail kevlar going over that aluminum tube like that, and just like, are you freaking kidding me? Oh my gosh, that's like smashed in. Yeah, it'd be interesting to just step on them and watch what happens. That is crazy. Oh my gosh. Yeah, with the flat top, they fit perfectly. They're built by an aircraft machinist. Everything is exact. That's just a huge chunk of waste. I mean, you look at the flat top and it's engineered to perfection. That's just a huge mess. And you know it's not heat treated, so you're gonna have weak spots by the welds. But things like this, you're putting a metal buckle right next to aluminum, metal to aluminum. Now, again, they're missing the history of why did that buckle get eliminated? Well, for one, it's about a third of a pound. But for two, the severe issue is that when you're running, you got steel rubbing on aluminum. And this will literally rub a hole right through the aluminum. You're saying this because you actually had one of those buckles on the flat top. Yeah, he start. just reverted it like 18 years of technology and experience. He just doesn't have that. And so he does, oh yeah, look, this is an upgrade. And he just has no freaking clue. This metal buckle, as you run, will just cut away this aluminum and literally chop a hole in this aluminum tube. I could actually probably go back and find comfort bars from 20 years ago that have holes in them right here where that happened. This buckle is retarded how they're trying to tie it on. I mean, are you seriously gonna hang from someone that tied it like their belt buckle? That makes no sense. But then there's no reason for that. So this is so you can- His backup strap. Yeah. I mean, when was the last time you fell out of your car because your seatbelt accidentally came off? The Velcro was only more so you can easily get access to the handle and pull it with gloves upside down with your eyes closed. Adding an extra buckle defeats the whole point of a quick release. I mean, I've been in water, in melted ice water, freezing. You go in the water with gloves on, you can't see, you're freezing. You got about 15 seconds to live. You think you can hold your breath for a minute. Well, that's when you're relaxed and calm and warm. But when you go into freezing ice cold water and it feels like a million swords stabbing you at the same time, you got like 15 seconds of air and you are not getting this buckle off with heavy gloves on upside down in the dark, uh, disoriented after face planting into the water. Man, these little things are just hokey. Here's another one. See like this here, if you go back 18 years of technology, 18 years ago, we had it go straight from here, straight to there. But what happens when you go to fly tandem or turn around, your legs get smashed into this bar. Think about when you fly tandem and your knees have to come out around your passenger. Well, this bar is right there smashing up against your leg. So experience, we knew this had to be come back and there has to be a recess for your knee right here. Absolutely critical as you start doing things like tandems and just going to stand up. What happens when you go to stand up? Bam, that bar is gonna smash right into the side of your leg, very uncomfortable. I mean, we used to have that 18 years ago, but then we got intelligent and figured, oh, hey, that's a problem. Let's fix that. Wow, 
Yeah, that's messed up. That's not an official part. We tried going longer way back when. Uh, bad plan didn't work. Oh my gosh, a freaking chunk of wood? I mean, again, 18 years ago, when you go out to do acro, you'd snap seat boards. And that board weighs upwards of two pounds, which is over double. The flat top seat board is like 12 ounces, anywhere from about 10.3 ounces up to about 12 ounces. It's the lightest, strongest material in the world. It's the same stuff Boeing uses for the floorboards of their aircraft. It's the highest tech material you can get. Oh my gosh, that's a nightmare. So look how thin this metal is and thin these points are, whoa. And how thin that point is, you don't have enough metal to weld onto. If you look at the flat top, there has to be some metal here. Look how much more metal is in here. It balances perfectly fine, even for very light people, which is why my son set the world record at age 10 flying the unit. So even a 10 year old can fly this unit for weight and balance, but you have to have enough metal in here to actually get a good weld. Also look at the thickness of the metal. You've gotta have thicker metal here because you just just don't have the strength to weld to that and there's just not enough metal to do that but you can see the recess of the flat top just experience knowing that when you do tandems or when you go to stand up and you spread your legs your knee needs access and recess right here and then of course look at the offset on the bars just a whole different world machine to a perfect uh radius and it's done, you know, it's engineered to perfection where you have exactly the right part and it's as light as possible while having absolutely the best strength. It'd be interesting to destructive test this comfort bar because the flat top comfort bar was load tested to 3,200 pounds. One side, 3,200 pounds. That's 6,400 pounds for two connection points. This is just like cut off and open. And for, I mean, it's like fraying I mean, this is brand new. It came like this brand new. This isn't a used unit. It literally has never even had a motor mounted to it. Oh my gosh. Yeah, big chunk of foam in the harness. They don't understand. They don't have the experience to understand. Well, what happens when you weight shift? Are you freaking kidding me? This slip buckle isn't even used right. That's messed up. Okay, so the padding adds zero for comfort. It actually jacks it up because what do you do your whole flight? You're trying to weight shift. Well, in order to weight shift, you need a supple harness right here. But with this big chunk of foam, you got a big chunk of heavy thing rubbing right up against your neck. Again, we tried it. It was horrible because you've got this big chunk of heavy, stiff stuff ramming into your neck when you're trying to weight shift and throw your weight around as you're flying because that's how you fly a paragraph glider is primarily with weight shift first. So again, that's one of those things you just can't, it's an absolute no-no. Your body's resting right on the frame. Almost seems like this bar right here is up just a little bit higher on his. See with the flat top, it's very important that in flight, notice you're not touching, you're not resting against the frame. You're completely isolated from it, which isolates you from the vibration. Again, if you add foam and stuff like that, you think you're adding comfort but it doesn't. Whoa, more buckles. Oh yeah, we got a quick release harness. After you have like three buckles to undo. What's the point of a quick release harness that has three buckles to undo? You can see how this bar rests right on the ground. You're already smashing this into the rocks, which in flight, you're not straight up. You're in this position. Notice what you're resting on. So the very first thing to hit the ground is a thin little jagged tube sticking right down that's gonna catch anything on the ground. Again, you got a right angle hitting the ground solid. Bad plan because when you hit a right angle on the ground and it catches anything, it flicks you face forward. Which is why on a flat top that doesn't happen. When you lean back, you hit skids. Basically your sled and you slide to a stop. You're not ever gonna hit that bar. You see like flat top, you get the super high end stainless rivets and two of them, not just one. Notice there's a hole here and no hole here. Somebody accidentally drilled some holes and then they shipped it that way. It doesn't fit. This is up, this is angled. I mean, it's just stupid. Like you can stick your arm right through it. it makes no sense, but this Velcro, it's what the freak. Just like the whole quality just looks like it's just slapped together by people that just don't care. That's in the wrong spot. That of course should never terminate on an edge because then it sticks out. So your Velcro should never end on a round. It should always end on a flat so that it's nice and perfectly clean. 
like a flat top. It ends perfectly clean on a flat. You don't end on a round. You can see you pull the Velcro, the Velcro ends on a flat. It terminates cleanly. This is hard to believe. I mean, think about vibration and what's gonna happen when you have a metal buckle against a plastic tank and then it vibrates for years. Another cool thing about a flat top is the cage pieces are a different size which is really critical for strength. A smaller cage piece is a stronger cage piece where he's trying to make his cage piece like this side fit up here. But this side is where you fall down and, and it needs the most strength. We made this one smaller so that you increase the strength down where you need it most, but keep the lightest possible weight. Notice how the flat top seat reclines quite a bit. So we've got a much steeper recline so that when you pick your feet up, you naturally slide back into the harness. Look how that one hangs almost level. It won't be anywhere near as comfortable because you don't have the recline position, but when you take off, you can't slide back into the seat. The flat top just puts you in the seat because you've got such an angle that your butt naturally wants to slide down into the seat. This one, you don't have that angle. And this is really concerning. That's interesting. Seaboard's only 11 and a half inches deep. 13 and three quarters, basically. This seat is gonna be a lot deeper to allow your body into it so it comes up under your legs. I mean, that's two inches difference. That's a huge difference. Wow, it's... Flat top's an inch wider too, so you have no width. This seat board is much narrower, which for a bigger guy, that's critical, but also for a little guy, the way weight shift works is you want your seat board a bit wider so that when you lean, you get more of a rock. It's like if you sit on a swing set and you lean to one side, the swing set's gonna wanna swing this way and swing that way. So you kinda want that width to give you the leverage for the weight shift. A lot more difficult to get in the seat and it's just not gonna function anything like a flat top and by having two inches less depth here is a huge comfort issue especially for people that are taller you know that might be 5 10 or 6 foot when your legs are longer if your seat board is two inches shorter it makes a huge difference on where that load is as well as the angle that you sit at so look at the angle the flat top is literally the most comfortable paramotor i've ever flown this <laughs> angle you just kind of slide back into the seat perfectly the material is is slippery the type of material you use is absolutely critical because if you have a rougher material you just don't slide as well these straps are too far back so they're coming back into your legs. The flat top straps are farther forwards, which are gonna make a notable difference in comfort and ease of use. Uh, you don't want the leg straps coming from under here. You want them coming from more up here. And so nearly an inch difference is gonna be notable. I mean, plus you have a smaller seat board. See, those aren't even in the same spot. Yeah, one's farther back, just attention to detail. And of course, look at the thread like hanging out. I mean, look how beautiful this stitching is. All the edges are melted and finished. So these edges are finished. You can see everything's smooth and slick. So there's no rough edges. But here you can see the edges. Look at this, it's folded over. So you literally have this big edge and rib right here. Imagine you're trying to get out of your seat and you have this big ridge. Look at that, totally sticking up, catching out. I mean, those are sharp points. Those simply don't exist. There are no edges here. It's just done by people that know what the freak they're doing. Buckle is just not right. I mean, these are all made as a set. Somebody slapped that together by themselves. You can even see where they grabbed it and bent it and like tweaked it and how they're like, it's smashed in and stressed and like scraped as they grabbed it and bent it. I would say they bent it after it was coated. Yeah, that's not bright. Here we're using all, you know, actual certified parts high-end stuff. It's made and machined by factories that do all kinds of testing. This is just slapped together in somebody's metal shop. Look at these threads. You got threads hanging off and like pieces sticking out. Little plastic clips. Whoa. So the flat top's lateral support is four and a half inches. This thing's lateral support. It's only two and three quarters inches. So their lateral support is nowhere near as big I can literally see that thing bending. Yeah. 
Yeah, look at that middle bar is bending right there. I mean, that's just your... You could probably snap that if you tried hard enough. Holy cow. Oh, fudge. <laughs> yeah, that's not happening. <laughs> Yeah, see on the flat top, this is a 125 wall tubing. You, you ain't freaking breaking that. And we're using 083 wall. But um, holy cow, you bent the freak out of that thing. Wow. Yeah, there's a huge difference. Oh, wow. This is so flimsy. Yeah. See, look at this, your whole lateral support substructure, look at this gap, it's an inch and a half. Compared to the lateral support structure here, that gap is three and a half inches. Three and a half inches. There's a huge difference in strength with this sticking out three and a half inches between an inch and a half. Again, they don't understand the history of the sport came back from one that didn't even have this support. And what happened is a comfort bar broke clean off the frame, not a flat top, but like a whole different brand called a Walker Jet. And the comfort bars would literally snap clean off of the frame. They just obviously don't have that experience and understanding as to why this part is so critical that it's built correctly and just has that extra support. And you can see the difference in how flimsy this is compared to how incredibly insanely strong. I mean, this one, we literally built it to take acro, which is why you have so much strength to it so that when you're slamming sideways or doing whatever, or say you take a massive collapse and get like a dynamic loading that jerks you sideways, you definitely don't want your comfort bar snapping off. Of course, it'd be also interesting. See, when I designed this, I actually folded the comfort bar all the way in <laughs> to make sure that even if you did bend it all the way in, it's not gonna break. So this comfort bar I know can get folded all the way in, which I've used in crashes before. I've actually crashed this and folded comfort bars like this, bashed them in so hard, and it took an enormous amount of load away from me, never even been injured. Where this, you can see is it's not gonna do that. Yeah, that would be interesting. Yeah, I made this piece incredibly strong because I could see through the testing, this is what needed to be that stiffest point because with your substructure and the lateral support, you have to have this strength here and it doesn't add any weight. You're putting very minimal weight to make that that strong. There's very small minimal weight. You can see how cleanly the flat top is done. Oh, well, again, they've got it folded over and then sewn so you have these big sloppy edges. You also have fraying right here. Yeah, and this off. is like just held by a thread. And of course, the second you fall forwards, it's just gonna slice this right off. Okay. So what you just Material. measured are these two side things and they go up a little higher? Yeah, these are much higher so it cups your leg for comfort. Well, for one, remember the seat board is much wider for like, especially for a bigger guy, but really any guy, you're sitting here, your body kind of squishes out. You want that nice, smooth, well-designed support here that has the longer wing to kind of give you that cupping feeling on your leg to make it super comfortable. This just doesn't have any of that. Considerably shorter, it just doesn't have it. And it's got little stiff, weird things here and like stuff sewn into it. Cause any little pressure point on your body over a two hour flight makes a huge difference. You get one little bunched up thing like something sewn into this. Look at this huge chunk of material right here that's inside the strap that's gonna be jammed up against your leg. It creates pressure points in your leg. Oh, totally different. Just a much better, well thought out design to keep everything clean. A lot of times people think, oh, we'll add this and we got this feature and we got this feature and they don't realize cleaner is smarter. Plus you don't have things to snag and tangle on. Even like this here, you can get things snagged on it and snagged here like this strap, stuff to snag. You do not want snag points on an aircraft and this have, has them all over the place where the flat top is so clean. I mean, look how squishy this is. So think about that up against your neck, this against your neck, 
and you're leaning back and forth. You don't want a whole crap ton of stuff. And we've actually done tests back and forth. Putting foam in here did not make it any more comfortable because the load is already over your shoulder. So it made no difference in comfort adding thick, chunky foam. This has a perfect, beautiful, thin foam to it, but it also has to be super supple and squishy where you can see this is a big, huge chunk of material it's a big chunk and that's going to be up against your neck trying to weight shift shoving it into your neck where you've got a unit that's designed to be a lot more supple so it effortlessly goes with you and is feathered light much much lighter and more well designed it is interesting just like when you look at a total piece of crap compared to the flat top it's just a masterpiece built by the best in the world made to perfection because it was made for me i didn't make it to sell it I made it for me and my family to fly it. So everything had to be absolutely the best. I spent like $750,000 developing it. This is just slapped together by Joe Jimmy Bob who just doesn't have the experience to even understand the slightest details. And then things like this Velcro is literally on this angle. I mean, the Velcro is literally on this angle. I mean, what happens when you pull tension on something and then you put a pressure point, it just rips right in two. What do you, what do you measure in here, Dale? Okay, the other thing is that this comfort bar, it's an eighth inch under 33 inches. And this is, it's an inch and an eighth lower. Certified height hook-in points are really critical because they're designed by the manufacturers of the gliders. So that point that you hook in is absolutely critical because your arm only extends so far below that point. So if a newbie buries the brake, the glider's not supposed to stall. If you raise that hook in point, you just threw the certification of the glider out of whack because now you're pulling more brake than the company designed, which it doesn't sound like much, but it makes a big difference. It also makes a difference in your weight shift. You've got certified height hook in points. You're gonna have better weight shift. 22 and a half, 22 and seven eighths. Yeah, almost 23 inches. So the wider the hook end points, the more stability you have and the better the weight shift and the more space you have in a harness for a bigger guy, it's just more comfortable. But raising that is just not intelligent. It's kind of fascinating. So now what are you measuring? I'm measuring the difference between the height of the seat and the comfort bar. So the seat dropped as well, which again, raises your hook end point. So what you're saying is he raised the comfort he bars and the he comfort lowered bar and the he seat. Lowered the seat. Yeah. Which they just don't understand the massive experience that goes behind how it has to be designed. I mean, you can't just have Joe Jimmy Bob, you know, have your mom like sew this together for you. She's not a pilot. She doesn't understand aviation and how everything has to be set up exactly correct according to spec. This is sewn on by one inch. The flat top, this piece is sewn between these two straps. Notice this chest strap goes in between these straps and this is all sewn together with extremely high-end sewing machine and materials. This strap is literally sewn on the top. You can see like the sharp points again that can stab you in the ribs and it's just sticking out in the open where it's nowhere near as strong as the flat top. There's only one strap there. Look at that. It's also sewn, this strap is sewn loose on top of that strap. So this strap is only sewn on that much. And then this strap is sewn on top of it. I mean, look how clean that looks where everything is terminated perfectly and sewn into a perfect sandwich. I mean, the strength of this is so much higher than that. It's ridiculous. As well as the quality, there's no sharp termination thing sticking out. Like right here, look how this is sticking out. I mean, you go to slide out and ow, that actually hurt, almost cut me. This is of course sharp and they're sticking out. You go to come out of the unit and you've got sharp points. <laughs> this, oh wow, okay, that's horrifying. Oh my gosh, this is one strap that comes up and ties to a buckle, literally tied on. My child could tie that better. Literally a four-year-old could tie something like a tie better than that. Notice this strap is not sewn back to itself. You're actually hanging from this sloppy, loose, 
unspecific position. I mean, it's a waste of time to even measure this because this position can hang. This can change. This is sloppy. This can just slip and move and your whole hook in point and your seating position can change. That is freaking messed up. On the flat top, that is fixed and solid. That is not moving. You are not changing your hook in point away from the certification. This strap comes up and back to itself and this whole thing is sandwich sewn together. So the top of the strap is sewn to the bottom of the strap and everything else is sewn inside of it. You have two pieces coming together and you're hanging from that. Now two pieces of strapping, not one piece of strap. This is not twice as strong. It's way, way, way beyond twice as strong. Oh my gosh, that sucks. So I'm trying to adjust this buckle and it's like impossible because the Velcro is sewn and terminated with this sticking up so it won't even slip through the buckle. And then here's the flat top. Whoop, 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 whoop. I mean, it's like, look at this. I'm trying to pull this through and I'm not even sitting in the harness with my load of my body. There, finally I got it to slip and bam, it sticks. You can't go any farther. The hang point and the positioning and all of how the thing is set up is absolutely critical that it doesn't change. You know, trying to go, oh, well ours is adjustable. Certified height hook in points are not adjustable, they're fixed. So either you have certified height hook in points and the unit is fixed to that exact point and you can't move it. I mean, you give that to someone who's a new pilot that knows nothing about anything and they put the harness on and bam, they stall their glider out of the sky because they had no idea what and how it's supposed to be set up. The flat top, you can't mess it up for one. That's how quick the buckle comes apart. You simply slip it around, boom, goes in, bam, done. Your buckle is not hanging from the metal. That's putting the metal buckle right on the round of the aluminum. See these threads are already tearing out and this is a brand new unit right here. So the, the sewing is already getting stressed and pulled and sloppy and fraying and sharp points again. They got foam on the bottom. Oh, that's weird. Yeah, put your finger right here. That's, that's carbon fiber. Don't know why your board needs foam, but okay. Flat tops, these are very specifically bent out. They're over about an inch wider. So these are only 18 inches. Uh, we played quite a bit with the width of the skids and it's important that they're bent like that. Why? More crumple zone, because when you fall, you're gonna hit those skids. And so bending them out gives you that immediate ability to impact. With the skids straight, you just don't have the distance. It's just not gonna provide as much impact resistance. Wouldn't that be more likely to also hit the back of your legs since it's... Yeah, tender? no question. That was another reason they have to be that width. They can't be wider. Um, they had to be exactly that width. We actually played with different widths, but the flat top ones are towed out a bit, very specifically for strength and the way it works. And of course your crumple zone, you want a natural bend so that if you crash down, they're, they're designed to smash and crush. These are just basically straight. Your footprint is over a foot wider. Maybe that's another reason it's so much more stable. I mean, this doesn't have the engine on it, but you can feel they're not the same shape. So they're not bent the same. It wobbles on the ground because it's not flat like a flat top. The flat top, the skids. Put it on flat surface. Are, here. are flat. Where this, you can feel they're different angles. And so it can rock. They're just not the right angle. They're just not machined to that level of precision. So what are you measuring down there? Um, theirs is 15 and three quarters. The flat top is 14 and a half inches from the back to the front of the skid. Here to the rear hoop, about eight inches. It's about an inch difference. So the flat top cage is closer to your body. Which would add what benefit? With the flat top, we brought the cage as close as we can physically get it to your body without creating other issues so that your roll cage is as close and m the most around your body. Plus it brings the weight as close in and as tight to your body as possible. Where this, the cage sticks out farther out the back. Uh, it's farther away from you. They're similar in width here, but this cage is farther backwards behind you. Yeah, you can't bring those skids forward like that. 
Why not? Because um, then they stick out in your way and smack you in the back of the legs. They have to be exactly like that. So not only are they not bent outward, they're also sticking out farther, which makes it more likely to hit the back of your legs than the flat top. Yeah, that's considerably longer, yeah. So you're putting the strength in the substructure. It's coming out five and a half inches compared to four inch and a half difference. So you've got a lot more by bringing this structure forwards again makes the comfort bar smaller and makes it much stronger because your substructure is going to be strong and so you don't have as much leverage arm to this comfort bar because this comfort bar doesn't stick out as far comfort bar is in tighter this is two inches longer this way so you have a two inch longer leverage arm on that comfort bar as opposed to putting it onto the super song substructure by having the comfort bar much shorter you have a much shorter leverage arm and of course the leverage makes a Big so you put more strength. load on that substructure on this, whereas more load goes on that comfort on bar. The comfort on the comfort bar, the comfort bar hanging from the pins, yeah. And, of course, now you have all that extra load on a flimsy little Velcro that doesn't have the strength to actually support load. Like if you somehow got an, an acro and got messed up and jerked this way, the comfort bar would just rip right off of that unit. It's only held on by a little thin sliver of super flimsy Velcro and it would just, the comfort bar would just rip right off. Where with the flat top, there's no freaking way you could hang a truck by that. That is not breaking. Plus, of course, the comfort bars are gonna be much, much stronger. Look how small this connection point is. As in here to there? Yeah. Why, what's the See, difference? the flat top, you have a lot of strength in having this piece hoop back to itself. That's not gonna be a big difference. I mean, it's, as long as it were built properly, the strength should be okay, but I don't like the leverage arm being so long because you're just putting that much more leverage onto these connection points right here. Seven and an eight, so you have more room for your arms in here with the flat top. Look how this top side isn't even centered with the bottom side. See how the top matches the bottom? Absolutely perfect. So the green on the top and the green on the bottom. I don't know about you, but I'm a little anal. I mean, just something like that where they're the wrong length and off angle and sideways and the sewing screen. It would just drive me nuts if things don't fit perfectly and correctly. And there's something to say for having an extreme perfectionist design and make your unit. That is obviously designed by someone that doesn't give a crap. It's like the $10 an hour employee versus the 70 year old master who's been doing it his whole life and his name is his life and he makes sure every part he makes is absolute to perfection and he won't give it to you if it's not perfect because he knows his name is behind it. You get the best, let's go flying.